Today we're going to talk about the carbon cycle. The goal of this video is to describe the steps of the carbon cycle and explain how humans have an impact on this process. Let's start by talking about carbon. Carbon is the basis of all organic molecules and it's found in a variety of chemical forms. Note, carbon changes chemical forms as it cycles. This is unlike water. Water is always H2O, but carbon comes in different forms. It can be in the form of carbon dioxide, which is CO2. That's what's in the atmosphere. It can also come in the form of glucose, which is a sugar. The formula for glucose is C6H12O6, and this sugar is what plants produce. So where can carbon be found? Well, it can be found in a few places. The first is macromolecules. These are very large molecules that are necessary for life. And there are four types of macromolecules. There are proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, and nucleic acids. We'll talk more about these four macromolecules later in the course. Carbon can also be found in our atmosphere as carbon dioxide, CO2. It can be found in minerals and rocks, and it can be found in fossil fuels. This would include coal, oil, and natural gas. Carbon can also be found in organic or living materials that are in the soil or even in aquatic sediments. Okay, now we want to talk about the main stages of the carbon cycle. Let's begin with photosynthesis. So during photosynthesis, plants capture carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and they use it to make sugar. Next is cellular respiration. During cellular respiration, carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere as waste from metabolism. And metabolism is just all the chemical reactions that take place in your cells, either to use or to produce energy. Next is consumption. Consumption occurs when an organism eats another organism and gets their carbon. In the picture, you see trees and grass performing photosynthesis, and the horse consuming the grass and performing cellular respiration. All of this is happening on land, but it's important to know that photosynthesis and cellular respiration also happen in aquatic environments too, like the lake in this picture. Now, those aren't all the steps in the carbon cycle. There's going to be three more on this slide. Next comes decomposition. So during decomposition, decomposers break down carbon from dead organisms, recycling it in the soil. Then there's fossilization, which converts carbon from once living organisms into fossil fuels. And this happens through intense heat and compression. Last is combustion. Combustion occurs when carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere from burning. In the picture, you can see dead organisms decomposing and the carbon in them being converted to fossil fuels, which can then be burned, releasing the carbon back into the atmosphere. There are a couple of very important living organisms that play a role in the carbon cycle, so I want to make those clear. One of them is decomposers. These are things like bacteria, earthworms, and fungi. They break down dead materials and return nutrients like carbon to the soil. There are also photosynthetic organisms like plants and algae, and they play an important role in driving the carbon cycle. They remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and convert it into simple sugars. Also, animals, plants, and fungi are living organisms that play an important role in this cycle. They do cellular respiration, which breaks down carbon-rich foods for energy. Let's finish up this video by talking about how the carbon cycle can be negatively impacted by humans. The main way we negatively contribute is through combustion. When wood or fossil fuels are burned, this causes a major increase in the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and excess carbon in the atmosphere traps heat, causing climate change. So to sum up this video, we've looked at the steps of the carbon cycle, and we've seen at least one way that humans can negatively impact this process.